if we're talking about magic finding meta, we can't leave out my favorite skills. As always, I made the build tonky as possible. What's up guys, Bridget here. The build right now has 58% quantity and 315% item rarity. We're reaching that with two Werewolf Ventors Gamble Unique Ring with Mox Rolled item quantity, high item rarity and good life rolls. Also using Gold Green Boots with Mox Rolled quantity. We can't miss out the Magic Finder Flask, Divination Distillery and this flask active all the time because we're playing as Pathfinder. Only sad thing about this, you have to press the flask every 5 seconds using a rare helmet with increased rarity rolls and increased rarity of slain rare or unique enemies. Without damage, quantity is worth nearly nothing. The build using two active skill gems, one for clear and one for signal target. Don't worry, you don't have to switch around any link. Burst skill is our clear skill, caustic arrow. You fire with your bow and where this projectile lands, it will create a caustic ground and this will deal in chaos damage over time. You know, this skill is not too good for clearing. Because of that, we are adding Auro Nova support to it. With this combination, or clear will be much, much faster. Our signal target skill is toxic ring. Firing a projectile with your bow and where it lands, you create a spark pad and this will start dealing chaos damage over time in an area and they can overlap with each other. You need to reach a certain increase area threshold to get out the maximum overlap. The magic number is 39%. At this point, all of your pods will over. Even with magic finder setup, we can reach this for better signal target damage. We're reaching this using the bow mastery on the tree, that's 20%, cluster gem with towering threat, and a simple glove craft. With all of this, we have 39% increased area threshold. Our biggest and best multiplier is coming from a secondary source. We will inflict with air on the monsters, which is 90% chaos damage taken increased by default. Also, we get an ascendancy node that will increase the wither effect and also give us chance to inflict wither. Because the on hit doesn't have good uptime, we need to use withering step. This will instantly add 8 stacks wither on the target. That will ramp up our damage while the toxic rain is also applying more stacks. In path of building, I take the frenzy charges because we're using a charm with frenzy on hit. This will up most of the time when you hit many many enemies at once. The best thing about this whole setup, we can control our damage. So we can do a little damage to the spire and it can start spit out monsters. This is when our many many defensive layers came in. Because we're playing as Pathfinder, we can't let out the biggest damage reduction from the build. We're converting almost all of the physical damage taken to elemental damage. We have 83%. Using lighting cooler, that's alone 50%. A unique flask, namely taste of hate with maximum roll. That's 21% because we have increased flask effect node allocated on the tree. Also using purity of elements so we can use a watcher eye with fist damage taken as lighting. As always we take reuse damage from elemental damage because we're using all the elemental damage reduction flask. You already noticed our life and flask bouncing up and down. Sometimes looks like we just take very little damage. But there is many many monsters around us we're watching a powerpoint presentation. Well there is a few reasons for this. We're using two flask with gain free charge when you get a hit, we have a good amount of extra recharging so when we take many hit under a second it will fill up instantly and it will activate itself healing us 4% of our life. We have really high life pool, so this number is big as well. The reason is we have over 6k life because I want to push this build to tier 16 map and magic find on that. Right now we can do tier 16 maps even with this setup, but it would be much much slower than tier 7. So till I fix the damage we staying on this level. I tried a few tier 16 jungle valley with ether influence, I did not die a single time, but it was slow so it was not good for magic find. This is the point many player miss. If you slow, you better not magic find at all, because the normal beer would be do it faster and you get more loot under the same time. The biggest recovery is coming from a unique amulet, Defiance of Destiny. This amulet has a really interesting line, gain percentage of missing unreserved life before being hit by an enemy. This is especially strong in encounters where you are sustaining a lot of small hits, like Obis where many monsters hitting you at the same time. We only can die to one shots, but because we have enough damage reduction in the beard in the tier 7 map, I can't think any mod combination that could one shot us. Even on tier 16 map, I did not have any problem. Only one danger for this beard and that's the flash siphoner monster. Not because we only kept with the flasks, I fixed that. So we not have to worry about the resistance from the flask. The problem, they will disable your magic finder flask, so it would be bad kill all the empowered monsters without your flasks. With the flask kill and the amulet recovery, maybe this is overkill for recovery, but hey. 
I don't like to use the 6 portal defensive layer in my build. I saw many magic finder die to soul eater monsters. Well, you will not with this build. If you do in Jewish maps with tons of wisp, you need crit immunity because the monsters could do big crits. In this build we can be crit immune easily because we just upgraded the pantheon for it and you done. Also worth to mention you need stun immunity as well, otherwise you could get stun lag or just would be annoying to mob. We have stun immunity with a flash craft and we take hurt of folk and the little of life node with stun avoidance. So we have 100% stun avoidance chance. If we want to compare this build to Penance brand, I will go with this, because I really enjoyed the Vine Skrill AOE from Caustikaro, also it feels good to control the damage and not accidentally kill the Spire. The tankiness is next level, also it's funny to watch the purple life glow bouncing up and down which is by the way coming from the 38 challenge. Honestly, this was the only reason I wanted to make this build, the purple life glow. Also I see more potential to do tier 16 maps with this than the brand. Because I think we can scale the damage higher, which I will try in the next build. I would like if you hit the like button, like the shaper hitting the other, so it can start spread to more people. Thank you! Few important things you need in the build, using a bunch of unique items. Let's start with our weapon, Widow Hail. This will increase the keyword bonuses because we are using a very good keyword. This will make the bow almost better than a crafted bow. Our main source of damage reduction, lighting goal, this will give us a huge physical damage reduction. Two Venters gamble with good quantity and item rarity roll and try to aim high life. You can pay extra for this because you will make back the investment. The boots, gold rim with high quantity. Defiance of Destiny unique amulet. Without this we would not able to tank everything in a map. Or annoyment is acrimony. Using a few rare as well. The most important piece is the helmet. Pure energy shield base because we using Eldritch battery. I bought a fractured one with item rarity, spammed life essence till I hit another item rarity. Then craft increased rarity of items dropped by slain rare or unique enemy. The keyword is also important. You need life, chaos and regular damage over time multiplier, damage with bows because we using Widow Hail unique bow, gloves, attack speed, big life, chaos resistance and crafted increased area for toxic rain, Stygian Vice base with strength, life, chaos and elemental resistance. Flasks we using is a ruby, topaz, a unique sapphire flask, taste of hate. A gold flask and a divination distillate life flask. On the utility flask you need have this mod. Gain free charge when you get a hit. Some mods reduce mana cost of skills and chance to being stunned. On the gold flask increase the effect and craft item rarity. While you exploring the forest switch to quicksilver so you will finish faster than when you porting back switch back the flask to gold flask. Pantheons we using is the following. Soul of Lunaris and you need to upgrade this. Chance to avoid projectiles and reduce elemental damage taken if you hit been recently, this will up all the time. Or if you do maps with high critical chance mods, you can switch to Soul of Solaris and upgrade it. Take no extra damage from critical strikes if you have taken a critical strike recently. Minor Soul of Ralakesh, bonded to passive point. I just want to highlight a few things on the passive tree that you need for the build. Using 2-8 passive cluster jewel with wicked pole, unwaveringly evil and unholy grace. Other side of the tree, same, wicked pole, unwaveringly evil and unholy grace. Two medium cluster jewel with towering threat and vast power. On the other, special reserve and spike concation. Using a watcher eye with physical damage taken as lighting while affected by purity of element. Chimes I'm using right now because we're choosing wildwood primaries. Suppression chance and onslaught on kill. Suppression chance and frenzy on hit, another suppression chance and increased effect of wither. We taking Pathfinder as our ascendancy. On your first lap, we take Nature Repriza. This node is a game changer in the early acts. Second lap, Nature's Adrenaline. Now you generating flash charges. Third lap, Nature's Boon. Last lap, Master Surgeron. Now your lifeless will be even active if you reached full life. Gem and Germany, starting with our single target ability in our body armor, efficacy. Toxic Rain, Awakened Vicious Projectiles, Mirage Archer, Empower Level 4, Awakened Void Manipulation, or Clear Setup in our Bow, Efficacy, Caustic Arrow, Awakened Arrow Nova Support, Awakened Swift Application, Awakened Vicious Projectiles, and Empower Level 4 in our Gloves or Aura Setup because we crafting level of socketed Aura Gems, Marvelance, Grace, Purity of Elements, and enlighten level 3. In our boots, 
Divine Blessing, Despair, Inspiration and Haste. In our helmet, Immortal Call, Ghost and Damage Taken and Withering Step. Or move and skill fame dash. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question, please leave a comment below. Also, I would like to say thank to my Patreons for supporting me. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. I was Pidget. See you next time.